Okay, so we discussed single amounts, annuities, and mixed streams last time around, and how we need to calculate the future value and the present value of our money. Now, the nice thing is, is that there's financial calculators to help us with that. And that's what today's session is all about. How to use a financial calculator to calculate your future values and your present values from various cash flow streams. Hey guys, I am Derek. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use financial calculator for the questions of time value of money. Before we start working on the questions, you will need to download the financial calculator from the App Store. Just search financial calculator, you will find it. After downloading it, just open it. That's what you will see. We will use TVM calculator for the calculation of time value of money. Inside TVM Calculator, you may key in the figures in the empty space. If you want to get the answer, just press on the button. You can also change the compounding period here. First part, let's calculate the future value of a single amount. Jane places $800 in a savings account, paying 6% interest compounded annually. She wants to know how much money will be in the account at the end of 5 years. Let's analyze this question. $800 is the money that Jane is going to save, which means she is going to pay now. So, this is PV, and it would be negative 800. PV, again, is present value. Paying money would be... And it's negative because you're paying the money into the savings account. <laughs> negative. Receiving money will be positive. 6%, this is the annual interest rate, IY. Five years, this is the period, N. To get the answer, you need to calculate the future value, FV. Now, turn to the financial calculator, set annually compounding, and set end mode. Then key in, negative 800 for PV, the present value. Key in 6 for IY, the annual rate. Key in 5 for N, the period. Lastly, press FV, then you will get the answer. Now notice that they have also put it to annual compounding and because they said this is compounded annually. Had it been monthly compounding, you would have changed the compounding frequency to monthly or daily to daily and so on. This amount of money will be in the account of Jane at the end of five years. Next, let's calculate the present value of a single amount. Mary wishes to find the present value of $1,700 that will be received eight years from now. Mary's opportunity cost is 8%. This question means, after 8 years, Mary will receive $1,700. That means, $1,700 is FV. What you need to calculate... FV is future value. It is PV. Using financial calculator, set annually compounding, and set end mode. Then key in FV equals 1,700, and equals 8, IY equals 8. Last step, press PV, you will get the answer. Negative PV means, this is the money that you will have to pay now. We have just discussed the first pattern of cash. So that's if it's a single amount. Annuities are the same amount of money given per compounding period. Cash flow, which is single amount. Now let's look at the second pattern, annuities. Annuity is a series of equally spaced cash flows occurring over a specified number of period. That means same amount of cash flows will be repeating. Annuities can be either inflows or outflows. There are two types of annuities. The first type is ordinary annuity. An ordinary annuity has cash flows that occur at the end of each period. The key word is the end of each period. The second type, annuity due. An annuity due has cash flows that occur at the beginning of each period. The key word is the beginning of each period. An annuity due will always be greater than an equivalent ordinary annuity because interest will be compounded for an additional period. Let's take an example. If you buy a bond, you will receive equal semi-annual coupon interest payments over the life of the bond. Equal semi-annual coupon interest payments are annuity. Another example, if you borrow money to buy a house or a car, 
you will have to pay a stream of equal payments. Loan payments are annuity as well. Tracy is choosing which of the two annuities to receive. Both are five-year $1,000 annuities. Annuity A is an ordinary annuity, and annuity B is an annuity due. Tracy has listed the cash flows for both annuities as shown here. For annuity A, the ordinary annuity, it means Tracy will receive $1,000 at the end of each year. But for annuity B, the annuity due, it means Tracy will receive $1,000 at the beginning of each year. So I want to stop here for a second because it took me a while to understand what the difference is between ordinary annuity, which is on the left column, and annuity due, which is on the right column. And it all comes down to the number of compounding periods. Because you get paid early, you know, quote unquote early with an annuity due, there's one extra compounding period. There's that period between zero and one that technically doesn't exist for an ordinary annuity. And this is the reason why for an annuity due, typically the value at the end is going to be greater than the value, the, the, the future value at the end is going to be greater for an annuity due than it is going to be for an ordinary annuity. Because there's one extra compounding period, that period between year zero and year one. To show this is the cash flow received at beginning of year one, we will write the cash flow at year zero, which is one year forward. Similarly, cash flow for beginning of year two, we will write it at year one. Note that the amount of both annuities is $5,000. But in fact, they have different values. Let's put it into calculation. Tracy wishes to determine how much money she will have at the end of five years if she chooses annuity A, the ordinary annuity, and it earns 7% annually. Using financial calculator, set annually compounding, and set end mode. Then key in, PMT equals negative 1000, N equals 5, IY equals 7. Last step, press FV, you will get the answer. So the big difference here is that for an annuity, this is a recurring payment. So instead of pressing in the, uh, typing in the present value, you're typing in the payment value for this one. And we're not actually using present value for this. Positive FV means this is the money that you will receive after five years. If we slightly modify the question, Tracy now wishes to calculate the future value of an annuity due for annuity B. Recall that annuity B is a five-year annuity with the first annuity beginning immediately. Using financial calculator, set annually compounding and set beginning mode. Then key in, PMT equals negative 1000, N equals 5, IY equals 7. Last step, press FV, you will get the answer. So the big difference here is that there's an extra compounding period that's at the beginning of the, of the uh, inflow period. And so you have to set the mode from end to beginning. Now, normally, if it's a single amount, it's always set to end mode. And if it's for an ordinary annuity, it's always set to end mode. But because an annuity due pays you at the beginning of the period, you have to make that one change on this financial calculator. And if you'll notice, you'll, you go back in this video a little bit to when we were talking about the regular annuity, what the future value would be. It's actually less than this future value with an annuity due because this annuity due has one extra compounding period. Even though we don't, we don't denote it with the periods because we set it to beginning mode. Otherwise, it would, it would confuse the whole matter. Under beginning mode, the FV is higher which means Tracy will receive more money for taking an annuity due. Let's look at another question. Jason wants to determine the most he should pay to purchase a particular annuity. The annuity consists of cash flows of $700 at the end of each year for five years. The required return is 8%. So to determine the most he should pay, that means how much he should pay now, that is PV. Uses AI to help you write the conscious provides. Type a prompt. Using financial calculator, set annually compounding and set end mode. Then key in PMT equals 700, N equals 5, IY equals 8. Last step, press PV. You will get the answer. So in this case, you want to know how much you need to pay into the annuity in order to later on get the future value of $700 payments per 
each uh, pay period for the five years with a required return of 8%. So that's a PV question, not an FV question. Last time we were trying to figure out what we're gonna get out of it at the end of the payment periods. This time we need to figure out what do we need to put into it? What do we need to put into it in order to, I'll get rid of this. I'm gonna uh, hold please, technical difficulties. Negative PV means this is the... I'm going to pause this for a second and get rid of this thing and I'll be right back.